So here's part two of the Hatson 135 QE review. I've been using this rifle for about 10 months now and I have encountered some major issues. At shot 409, the safety broke. And when I say broke, it was in this unsafe position and it wouldn't move anymore. So it failed in the unsafe position. Luckily, I could still fire it. But shortly after that, it developed another issue in that you cock it, get ready to shoot, good position, and pull the trigger, and nothing. Trigger wouldn't pull. You know it's in the unsafe position, but how you had to fix it was either bump the barrel a couple of times like that or completely break it down, hit it again. Needless to say, that gets really annoying when you get in a good position, you're ready to fire, and the damn thing won't shoot. So, about a month ago, I decided, you know, I'm over that. Hatson's got a one-year warranty on it, so I'm going to send it back. Contacted them with the problems, problems being the safety, that the barrel wouldn't properly cock, and that the accuracy has never been very good. Sent me an email back, said send it in, and we'll take a look at it. Okay, great. So I found out that, uh, hmm, evidently Hatson's located in BFE, Arkansas, in the middle of nowhere. It was $105 to ship this thing ground, UPS, and another $35 for the insurance. So $140. I was like, $105 for shipping? It's like, you all delivering on an ATV or a horse and buggy? My gosh. You know, total package, maybe 11 pounds going ground, not even halfway across the country. Uh, kind of ridiculous. I will say that they had some excellent customer service on the turnaround. I got it back in two weeks. And there was some paperwork in there, which was a copy of the email I sent them. They didn't list anything that they did to the rifle. I have no idea what they did to it. Nothing. Nada. Zilch. Crickets. I do know they fixed the safety. That's working. Um, I fired it 10 shots the day I got it back, and shots three, four, and five had to do the whole barrel thing again, so evidently they didn't fix that. And as far as accuracy, I don't know yet. We're going to do a test here in a minute and see how the is and see if it's any better. I seriously doubt that it's going to be any better. Okay, so we're going to do a test to see if it's any more accurate. I'm shooting the same uh, H&N Spike 16.05 grain. Uh, I'll have to check the density altitude today. It's probably a little lower than the last time we shot, so <clears throat> velocity may be a little bit slower. Let's see if this thing shoots any good. See, there's one of the there's the freaking problem that. I was talking about earlier, you got to bump that barrel. <clears throat> Real pain in the ass. So as expected, the velocity was a little lower at 821 feet per second than the last time at 870. Most likely, this is due to a lower pressure altitude today, which was 1,100 feet, versus the last time at 2,083. The SD on today's group was really good at 4.03, but that's not nearly as awesome as the original test, which was 2.67. The group size was 3.4 inches versus the original test at 1.802. Yeah, the wind played a part today, but I believe the rifle's accuracy itself is worse now with almost 900 rounds to it. I know I'm a more practiced and consistent shooter now, and all the groups I shoot with my high power, F-Class, and PRS competition rifles are tighter than they were months ago, but this Hatson ain't getting no tighter, so you make the call. So in conclusion, I'm going to equate this rifle to like a, a bad relationship. You know, you meet a woman, you find something about her that's like super attractive, you're like, yeah, I can do this. You start dating. At first, everything's pretty good. And then you date a little while, and slowly all the flaws and all the crap.
crazy start coming out. And you're like, hmm. Positives outweigh the negatives, so I think I can deal with it. And then as you go on, those flaws and that crazy, they get worse and worse. And you're like, I wish I'd never met this person. But I'm sort of invested in the relationship now. I better stick it out. But a while after that, all the flaws and all the crazy, they're not only sucking the joy out of your life, they're sucking the entire life out of your being. And you're like, I am freaking done. I think I'm gonna reach that point with this hat. I don't know if it'll be at 100 rounds, another 1,000 rounds, but I seriously doubt that I'm gonna get 2,000 rounds out of this thing before I just go <laughs> chuck it in the garbage. I really hate to throw 300 bucks, well, a little under 300 bucks, plus 140 I spent for shipping away, but uh, you know, at some point the frustrations outweigh the benefits and you, just, you gotta cut your losses and go. So, unless you saw something in part one or part two of this review that you really, really liked about this rifle, if you're looking for an air rifle, I suggest spending your money on something else because this rifle is gonna be all kind of a piece of crap. Got a little bit of enjoyment out of it, but not enough to justify the 400-ish dollars I've got in it. So thanks for tuning in and uh, subscribe and like. I'll try to get another video out for you guys before too long. And uh, 